Hey, I'm Kev Kier, I'm Mr. Kier, and welcome to MotoGP14 and the last challenge to champions scenario. Just like Barros, we are Carlos Checa in a damp track in Valencia. We've got seven laps to beat Alex Barros to the line and finish on the podium as we start the scenario in fourth place. And there is Carlos Checa in the middle of his career. Yeah, that's a 28 year old, and these are the race options and the riding aids. As you can see, got traction control on low intensity because these 500cc bikes are probably the hardest bikes to ride in the game for me. I would expect it to be the MotoGP bikes, but these seem to be a bit harder as we are on the iconic Yamaha YZR500 in 2001. We're going around the Ricardo Tomé circuit, the traditional season closer for the Grand Prix World Championships. And as you can see, we have got to get on the podium, as I said, to get at least third place in the race and beat Alex Barros to the line, who starts second, and we are way behind him. But we've got a long time to catch up to him, seven laps. So you, this challenge is all about consistency and getting a bit lucky because there are back markers as well in this challenge as we get underway now on the back straight in the middle sector with just over actually seven laps to go. We've got a bit more than seven laps to go in this race and as you can see we've got the racing line in on the corners I think this is just because of the game modes it was the same with the real event for 2013 you can't turn it off it seems I've tried and it doesn't seem like you can do that but I'm guessing that's okay because you know most people you know these bikes are quite hard to ride and so it's good for most people you know to get no when to break and you know if you're going too fast the red means you're going too fast blue means you're going just fine or even going a bit slow so we're going towards the final corner, this tricky final corner, as you've got that bendy straight, got to break a bit early, and the bike just eases towards the apex. You don't have to direct the bike there, it just eases into it, as we've got Steady Eddie Lawson, the four-time 500cc champion, in first, we've got Alex Bowers, and then we are catching Chan there, and there's been a few gitches in this game, particularly in this Will Vents 2013 and this Challenge to Champions mode, especially with the timing, it... I don't know what it's recording the, the gaps with, but it's just wrong. We're not less than two seconds behind Chan there because you would see him. And we can't see him. So, yeah, the timing sometimes glitch. And I also found another glitch where some of these scenarios are so hard. They, they really are challenging. <laughs> you are challenging the champions, of course. And the Max Biaggi one at the Circuit of the Americas in the wet. And it's so difficult to control these bikes it took me ages to do that it took me about 10 15 goes to get this one and the one with Biaggi as well and so after a while it seems like the game took in the tire wear took in the brake wear and so each attempt I was trying it was just getting worse for me I was like what's going on why am I not breaking I braked here last attempt why isn't it working this time and so I restarted went back to the menu Guess what, it works again, because I went back to the menu, tried it again, got it first time. And so yeah, th that is another glitch to look out for. These trying to challenge, challenge the champions modes, if you haven't seen, if you haven't played this yet. And so, yeah, there's a couple of glitches in the game that do kind of ruin it at times, but they're not, you know, gameplay glitches that really break the game, you know. It's still a very solid game, a very good game, a great improvement on MotoGP 13. MotoGP 14 is and you know they got it looks so much better uh, I was saying MotoGP 13 just relied on too much on like contrast and saturation it, it's a funny looking game uh, this game it looks much better it's like the improvement from WRC 3 to WRC 4 it's with a new engine this game it looks much better of course on next gen it looks better and on PC as well I think you get texture packs on PC as well as you try and look down the inside of Chandler for third place. Looks like we have got it. Oh, he's nicking, but we've outbreaked ourselves. We've outbreaked ourselves into the hairpin. He's down the inside, but we can get the cut back down this back straight. Has he got some power going on here? I do like the dashes, the little touches there. The, the dashes are different for all the bikes. All, and if you go into first person mode or, you know, helmet cam, you can see that the dashes are exactly the same as they're on the bike. It's, it's a great little touch that is much better than. With the GP13, the bikes handle better as well. They're not as floaty. They're not as as arcadey. There's a bit of feel and a bit of resemblance going into the corner that you have to, you know, you have to get the bike leaned in better. You have to be very 
gentle on the power coming out the corners even with the moto 3 bike you can wheel you can you know get the wheels going you can get it kind of revving out of the corners and yeah it's great to see the great improvement from moto gp 13 to this game it is so much better i believe the moto 13 and that's not talking about the new content as well such as this challenge champions mode such has the wheel events 2013 and you know there's a shuffle going pre mode so if you just want to hop on for a quick three minute race free that race even you can do that and you know online seems to be pretty similar and you know pretty barren unfortunately unless you're in a league and fortunately i'm in a motor gp 14 league and so there yeah, is a much better game i believe than moto gp 13 presentation side you know it's pretty similar ai are pretty similar unfortunately so that's one big thing that needs to be improved ai for the next game i believe because they're pretty similar, they don't take much notice of you. They're great fighting each other, they're great battling each other, but... And sometimes if you're down the inside, they do recognise that. But they are pretty focused on each other, and so yeah, that can get a bit annoying. Sometimes if you do if you do just like to be a bit aggressive with the AI, you know... Sometimes it doesn't work out, but yeah, and the, on the whole, much better game and career mode. You know, they... Tried to make improvements there, you know, they've introduced bike development, but it's very limited, and it gets, it finishes very quick, I think I maxed out the improvement for my bike on all parts in about 10 races, but I understand that's because people, you know, want to switch teams maybe from the worst Moto3 bike in the first year to a better one, as we're coming up to some of that traffic, as you can see, and so yeah, I can understand why this event's a bit shorter, but I would have liked it a bit more in depth setups quite similar and yeah, everything's quite similar and and again the ai in career mode they just finish in the same places it, it's very i guess it's very annoying if you make a mistake early in the season you're just playing catch up because ai such as like jack meadow in moto 3 will always finish on the podium always battling at the front you know that is that's something to work on as well at least in f1 2013 it does get a bit random at times you do get a cater or more emotional scoring points so I would like to see a bit more randomness in the AI in career mode as well for the next game if you know Marcel and are doing MotoGP 15 but on the whole much much better than MotoGP 13 so that's my thoughts about the game at least you know really enjoying it and I'm enjoying it much better I'm enjoying it more than Grid Autosport which I didn't think I would say after the first night of playing Grid Autosport but yeah I'm enjoying this game much better and I really enjoyed the variety in bikes as well. You get the MotoGP 2013 bikes to ride as well with a few riders. So yeah, you got great choice there to choose from on the bike side, on the riders side. I do like having the champions here and that was DLC I believe for MotoGP 13 such was the Red Bull Rookies Cup. And there's some DLC for this game which hasn't gone down well such as the Guna Seca track which you have to pay like 3 quid for and you can only use it in time trial really. Or online and there's going to be Donson Park as well had it and I'm not sure if they're going to have the Red Bull Rookies Cup but I know so they don't have all of the Moto2 and Moto3 riders so we get past Barros now so we've done all of the conditions can we catch Eddie Lawson in first they don't have they didn't have all of the Moto2 and Moto3 riders again at the beginning of the game I don't know what it is about this that they can't put them all in it at first but they you know they updated that very quickly you know within a month and made sure that the DLC was out actually on Xbox before the PS3 and PS4 so I don't understand if you know Xbox gets preferential treatment in this game but yeah there's also in PC as well they updated it as well and so yeah that's a strange thing and I'd like to see actually all Moto2 and Moto3 riders in the game next in the next game maybe it'd be easier on next gen as well of course you know much powerful systems than the Xbox 360 and PS3 well, yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. Let's talk about, let's talk a bit more about how Carlos Checker here and the Yamaha and this scenario. So this final scenario, as I said, we've done the conditions, but we're trying to catch steady Eddie Lawson, who made his name on this very bike, on the Yamaha in the mid-80s, winning three titles before going to Honda in 1989, alongside his big rival, 1987 500cc world champ, you know, Rain Gardner. Managed to beat Garner, managed to get a title, one of the first to bring win back to back titles with two different manufacturers. Of course, Valentino Rossi's done that in recent years. And this Yamaha is one of those iconic bikes in motorcycle Grand Prix racing. It raced from 
1973 to 2002, one in its debut with your host Saninen Sanin in 1973 in Germany, the only Finn actually Yaro, Yaro, to win a road racing champion, world championship, the 250cc champion in 1972, and actually Yano Trudy was named after him as well. And this Yamaha has brought titles to the greatest of them all, maybe Agostini in 1975, his last world championship before his retirement. And it gave three titles to Kenny Roger Roberts even in the late seventies, including as a rookie in nineteen seventy eight. Gave three titles to Eddie Lawson, and gave three titles to Wayne Rady in the early nineties as well after the Lawson reign. And so, yeah, it's a it's a very good bike. And Carlos Checker was a very good rider. It's actually one of my favourites growing up. You know, watching MotoGP when I believe the BBC got the rights in two thousand. And free and sad, I'll never forget that first race that BBC had because the young Japanese rider, very talented 250cc champion in 2001, uh, Kato, he said he passed away in that race after having an accident into the out of the 130R. And so, yeah, unfortunately, that's why I always remember that race. But yeah, the Yamaha was very successful until 2002 when it became MotoGP and it was against four stroke. No engines and it just couldn't compete and so you had to upgrade the bike unfortunately Yamaha for the MotoGP era but this is 2001 with Checker and he was a very solid rider in MotoGP I like the midfield riders back then you like Anthony West you know John Hopkins Olivier Jatt Nakano on the on the Kawasaki I like the Kawasaki riders a lot when I was growing up I don't, don't know why they just seem like the underdog I think that's that British sensibility where we like the underdog there and so yeah, Carlos Cech, he was a very solid rider. His best position in the championship was fourth in 1998. You know, he was always around the top five, you know, even though he was rarely in the challenge for a title at least that 500cc level or MotoGP level. And he rode until the mid-thousands in MotoGP. He won a couple of races at Catalonia in 1996, beating Mick Doohan, who was the, you know, reigning champion with Honda. And then... He won in 98 at Yohama just by ahead of the Japanese rider Abe as well to get his two wins in the Grand Prix World Championships. And then he went to World Superbike and dominated the 2011 season after a couple of seasons in there starting in 2009 in World Superbikes. And he won that as the first Spanish rider to win a World Superbike title and only the third European outside the UK to win a title as well alongside Raymond Roche, who won in 1990 the French rider and was runner up in 91 and 92 in World Superbikes and and the Roman Emperor, the old rival of Antino Rossi, Max Biaggi, who's also one of the classic riders in this game as we're coming out the final corner now, he won it in 2010 and 2012 and now we're trying to get the run on Lawson, the four-time champion have we beat him to the line as we have done this challenge, we annihilated this challenge, I do apologize for not talking about it, but yeah, that is Carlos Checker's history on motorcycles. He retired at the end of 2013, last year. And so, yeah, he's a very good rider, Carlos Checker, and it was great to see him finally win a championship in World Superbikes a couple of years ago. But as you can see, we have done all of the challenges now, and that is challenge the champion 17. Very challenging, very actually good variety between the challenges you see that's seven laps long there's a lap challenge to get from the back to the front there's a few laps you know mainly it's to get on the podium or in first but i really enjoy the challenge champions Mo, let me know what you think about it so for watching and i'll see you next time